Hi there. In this video, I'll show you why FreeCAD is the best 3D software for 3D printing, whether you're just starting out or already a pro. We're going to cover the key points that show how FreeCAD can easily fit into your workflow and meet your needs, whether it's 3D modeling or editing existing 3D files. I'm going to give you five reasons why FreeCAD is worth your time to learn. The first one, and probably the most obvious, is that FreeCAD is open source, completely free, and works offline. You can go to the FreeCAD website right now, download it, and use it for life without paying a single cent. That's a huge plus, especially if you're a hobbyist working with 3D printing. You even have access to the source code if you want to tweak it yourself. Another great thing, everything runs locally on your computer. No cloud, no online account required which means you're always in control of your files and you'll never lose access to them like you might on other platforms. I've put together a comparison chart of the most popular 3D software options you can use for 3D printing. Most of the prices listed here are for annual licenses in a commercial context. And as you can see, the cost can add up pretty quickly over time. Fusion does offer a free license, but only if your business makes under $1,000 per year and your files are stored in the cloud. You can't open more than 10 documents at once, which makes it nearly unusable for working with large assemblies. It's basically a stripped down version. Onshape also has a free plan, but all your files are public. SolidWorks offers a maker license for around $50 per year, but it requires an internet connection and you're not allowed to use it for commercial projects. Among the free options, there's also Blender, which is incredibly powerful but not parametric, which can be limiting depending on your modeling style. Let me know in the comments what software you're using and why. I personally think FreeCAD is the best option if you're a hobbyist who wants to commercialize your creations. It's powerful, free, open source, and parametric. And that leads us to the second reason. FreeCAD is a parametric CAD software, which means you always have access to the full history of your model. Usually on the left side of your screen, you'll see a tree that shows every step of your design. You can go back and edit any operation. For example, here I'm going back to the very first sketch to change the diameter of a circle. This is a huge advantage, especially for 3D printing prototyping, because you'll almost always need to tweak your model to fit new requirements. And having that kind of flexibility is absolutely essential. Of course, FreeCAD comes with all the standard tools for creating solids and surfaces. Just like in other CAD programs, you start with a sketch and then use solid operations like extrude, loft, sweep, mirror, and more. Most of the toolbars are located at the top of the screen, so everything is easy to access. If you're curious about how I modeled this bike stem, I've linked the full video in the info card above. You can also create variables to control your 3D model without going back into sketches or operations. This is super handy if you need to make several different sizes of the same object. The third point I wanna talk about is how easy it is to modify STL files in FreeCAD. If you're into 3D printing, you've probably already visited sites like Thingiverse or MakerWorld. Most of the time, the community shares 3D models in STL format, which are easy to load into slicers but not so easy to edit. In FreeCAD, you can download something like this bike stand and quickly adjust things like its height or the diameter of the mounting holes. In FreeCAD, go to File and then Import and select your STL file. At this stage, there's not much you can do with the mesh because FreeCAD works with solid operations. To make sure your STL is actually a closed solid, switch to the mesh workbench. With the mesh selected, use the analysis tool from the menu to check if it's watertight. In our case, the mesh is a solid, so we can move on to the next step. But sometimes the STL isn't properly closed. For example, with this model, the analysis tells us it's not a solid. We can use the fill holes option, which automatically detects and patches all the holes in the 3D mesh. Once that's done, we run the check again. And now it shows up as a solid. You can also use more advanced tools to inspect things like face normals, duplicate faces, and other potential issues. 
FreeCAD will analyze and attempt to repair the mesh automatically. This workbench also includes the section tool, which I use all the time. It lets you create a cross section of the mesh along a plane, and it's super useful when you're doing reverse engineering. It gives you the projected outline of the cross section, which you can then use to perform various operations, like an extrusion, for example. Once we've confirmed that the mesh is properly closed, we can switch to the part workbench to convert it into a solid. Just use the Create Shape from Mesh tool and set your desired precision. I've used 0.01 here to get a shape that closely follows the original mesh. This gives us a shape, but it's not a solid yet. It's just a collection of surfaces. To turn it into a solid, we need to use the Convert to Solid tool from the Part menu. Depending on the complexity of your model and your computer's performance, this step might take a little while. In the view properties, you can change the color of the model's edges. I usually set them to black, which makes everything easier on the eyes. Now that our 3D model is a proper solid, we can apply any operations we want to it. Let's start by enlarging the four mounting holes. To do that, we'll select a flat face and create a new sketch on it. We'll use the external geometry tool to project three points from each circle. That allows us to find the center of each hole, so we can draw larger circles in the exact same positions. Using the three-point circle tool, we'll recreate each circle to find the center of the four holes. Then we'll turn them into construction lines. Now we can draw four new circles for example, with a diameter of nine millimeters. Now we can close the sketch and make a symmetric extrusion of the four circles, let's say 50 millimeters in both directions. Then we just use a Boolean difference operation to enlarge the holes. We can see that the operation went through smoothly. Now, I'll show you a neat trick to do a push-pull. I want to lower the bottom face to make the part taller. To do this, I'll switch to the draft workbench, select the face, and use the Trimex tool. I'll set the value to 15 millimeters, which will extend the solid downward by that amount. This is really handy and useful in certain situations. The Trimex operation creates a new solid, so now we need to combine it with the original one to get a single solid body. That's easy to do in the part workbench using a simple union operation. This union creates a brand new solid. So you'll lose any custom edge colors you had before. But you can fix that either by adjusting the default settings in FreeCAD or simply by changing the edge color again in the view properties. To prove that we're working with a proper solid, I'm going to add a fillet to one of the mounting holes. Just select an edge around the hole and apply the fillet. And as you can see, the operation works perfectly. Now that we've seen how FreeCAD can handle STL modifications, let's take a look at how it can boost your productivity when it comes to 3D printing by using add-ons and macros. And that brings us to the fourth point. Before we continue, here's a quick message from today's video sponsor, PCBWay. They're a trusted name for both DIY and industrial projects. I had the chance to test their 3D printing and CNC services to create a bike chain ring, and the quality was truly professional. You simply upload your 3D file, select your options, and you're set. Their standard 3D printing options are excellent. Plus, every new customer receives a $5 coupon for their first order. A big thank you to PCBWay for supporting this video. The first add-on I wanna show you and it's super useful for 3D printing, is called Fused Filament Design. It was developed by Rahiks. It includes tools that help you generate geometries optimized for easier printing. To install an add-on, just go to the Tools menu, then Add-on Manager. In the search bar, type Fused Filament and click Install. Once it's installed, you should see three new icons appear in the Part Design Workbench. These tools are mostly focused on optimizing the way holes are printed, which are often tricky to get right in 3D printing. To try out these tools, let's create an M5 hole in the center of this cube. 
We'll start by creating a sketch. Using the external geometry tool and a few construction lines, we can easily find the center of the face. Then we draw a circle and set its diameter to five millimeters. Next, we use the hole tool. In the options, we select the ISO profile, choose size M5 and set the depth to through all. The first tool I wanna to show you lets you create teardrop holes. This design makes it much easier to print holes without using supports. You might have already noticed this shape on the bike stand earlier. To create this shape automatically, just select the hole, click on the hole wizard, and choose the teardrop option. You can pick between two angle types on my Chitty Plus 4. The 120 degree version gives really good results. As you can see, the hole changes shape automatically. No need to go back into a sketch. The second tool I want to show you is Add Thread Forming Ribs. It allows you to screw a bolt directly into the hole without needing a metal insert or tap. To use it, first go back to the hole options and make sure to check the thread box. Once that's done, select the hole, click on the hole wizard, and choose the thread ribs option. You can adjust the parameters if you want, but in my case, I'm leaving the default settings and just clicking OK to finish. As you can see, the ribs are generated correctly, and they'll give you enough material to screw your bolt. There are other useful tools as well, like generating holes for zip ties to help secure your parts. I really recommend checking out Rahix's blog. He's written a, an in-depth article explaining how to optimize your 3D printing workflow from modeling the part to choosing the right print orientation. It's honestly a gold mine of tips and insights. The second add-on I wanna show you is all about Gridfinity, a very popular storage system in the 3D printing world. It lets you create modular grids where you can snap in all kinds of containers. It's a standard format and you'll find tons of designs on Thingiverse or Maker World to store almost any kind of tool. This workbench was created by Stu142. He did an amazing job making it easy to generate Gridfinity bases and containers directly in FreeCAD. In my case, I designed one to organize a few tools for my CNC. To install the add-on, go to FreeCAD's add-on manager and search for Gridfinity. Once it's installed, switch to the Gridfinity workbench. From there, you can generate the base grid and create different containers parametrically. It gives you a great starting point to design your own custom storage. And honestly, it's a must-have add-on. One of FreeCAD's biggest strengths compared to other CAD programs is how easy it is to create macros. Once your design is finished, you'll need to send it to a slicer for printing. Since I'm using a Kitty X Plus 4, I created a simple macro that exports my 3D model as in step file and opens it directly in the slicer. It's a small automation, but it saves time and makes the workflow much smoother. From there, I can adjust the print settings, slice the model, and send it straight to my printer to start the job. Thanks to the built-in camera, I can monitor the print remotely and even create a time-lapse if I want to. Honestly, this Chidi X Plus 4 is a real Bamboo Lab killer. It delivers the same results for a much lower price. And coming from a CR-10S, I can tell you the difference is just incredible. If you're interested in this printer, you'll find an affiliate link in the description below where you could buy it. The fifth reason you should be using FreeCAD is the community. Thousands of people use FreeCAD, and chances are, someone has already faced the same problem you're dealing with. You can head over to the official FreeCAD forum to ask questions or find solutions. The community is incredibly helpful. You can also check out Reddit, where people share their FreeCAD projects and exchange tips. And I recommend following FreeCAD on Twitter to stay up to date with the latest development news. FreeCAD is constantly evolving and sometimes brand new features land in the development versions that could really improve your workflow. There are also some great content creators on YouTube to help you learn the software, including my own channel. I cover lots of topics for beginners and advanced users alike. You'll also find Dewey Kuangdong, who specializes in surfacing, FCB Lounge for everything BIM related, Offset CAD for general topics, and finally Mango Jelly, who covers each function in depth. Whatever your style or goals, there's something for everyone. Which brings us to the final conclusion. Getting started with FreeCAD can feel a bit intimidating at first, 
but trust me, it's absolutely worth it. FreeCAD is completely free, so you've got nothing to lose. It comes with all the 3D modeling tools you need to design just about anything. You can easily modify STL files, the add-ons and macros bring tons of extra features, and if you ever get stuck, the community will be there to help. That's why I truly believe FreeCAD is the best 3D software for 3D printing. I hope this video helped you, taught you something new, or at least entertained you a bit. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to like, subscribe, and share it with someone who might find it useful. Thanks for watching.